Let's go drifted. Hey, I'm the Drifting Dad, and today we're going to take a look at the rear suspension on my FBR7. I got some damage on it from the last drift event. I'm going to show you how I'm going to go about fixing it. I'm going to make some, take some measurements so we can make some drop brackets to reduce the binding on the suspension. Taking out the suspension links, and you can see this is what happened the last time I took it out drifting. All of the bushings, these are the lower control arms, they've been destroyed. Let's see here, more of the same. And the uppers, not as bad, but they still were destroyed. So, I believe this is primarily due to the design of the rear suspension from Mazda, and there's some inherent binding, especially when you lower the car, and I want to try to show you that in this video. So I've got a full kit here, and this is the rear suspension. This is 11 3104R. You want to take a look there. So you've got these harder inner pieces and then some softer outers and sleeves and some lube as well. So here's the inner piece. It's a harder durometer than these outer pieces. And then what I believe they're trying to do here is basically make it so that you still have some compliance on the outer bushings, but this inner one is going to help locate the arm back to front better. Um, a major design flaw with the RX-7 suspension is that the upper arms need a tremendous amount of movement or of, I guess, lengthening as the suspension goes through its travel. And I want to show you that. So I've got all the bushings out. You can see that pretty much every single one is torn, including these harder inner halves. So that means that we probably had the axle moving so much that the bushings could not physically hold the arms in place. Um, you don't see a whole lot of damage on the insides of the arms here, but obviously the arms are bent um, from the tremendous cornering forces. And obviously in drifting, um, when you're putting the car sideways on initiation, uh, there's definitely a lot of sideways force. And I just really think that this design of the rear suspension, the stock design that Mazda has is just not sufficient um, to deal with. Once you lower the car three to four inches, you put 17 inch wheels, big sticky tires, and then try to send it sideways. So <clears throat> that's my theory there. Let me know um, in the comments below if anyone disagrees or agrees. So what I've done here is basically set the car up to a point where I can take some geometry off of it. I've got jack stands underneath it and I've actually set it up so that the distance from the rocker to the floor is the same in the front and the back. So now we can make you know, the vehicle square to the floor somewhat and we can take some measurements to see how I'm going to build my drop brackets. So what we're going to do is put the rear arms back in. And then we're going to put the suspension at ride height. So jacking up the pumpkin until it is carrying the weight of the vehicle. And we'll see the heights of the rear suspension, pick, rear control arm pickups compared to the height of the pickup on the vehicle. What I'm trying to do here is make the arm parallel to the ground when it's at ride, the lower control arm parallel to the ground when it's at ride height, just like the, of which I assume is how the stock Mazda system was. I'm not entirely sure, but I know that we'll get better results than what we had when it was 
at stock right height or at stock location with it lowered all the way I have it. So here we go. All right, we've got the both lower control arms in. I'm not gonna put the uppers in for now. I think that we can get to where we need to get the way we are here. And also note that the watts linkage is still in. Go ahead and back this up. So I've got much shorter spring. I guess before I do that, I can show you the springs. These are just five inch circle track springs. I wanna say they're maybe a 250, yeah, 250 pounds per inch. Pretty nice unit, pretty cheap. Um, let me get you a height on these as well. The height is about eight inches, I believe. Yep, eight inches right there so if anyone's looking to go in a car real easy upgrade I really just cut the bump stops a little bit and put these springs on so to put this at ride height I'm going to jack up on the pumpkin you can see it's moving a little bit put this at ride height and the jack up on the pumpkin basically until we see the car is off the ground. So that was the spring. So we'll check here. We're still on that. So we just need to go a little bit more. So you heard that. So we are at about ride height. You can see here, look at that angle of the, look at the angle here. So the phone's about straight. You can see how, how much this lower control arm is at an angle. So what I'm aiming to do, the drop bracket, is move this pickup point right here down. So this arm is parallel. And at the same time, drop the shock bracket down, shock mounting point down as well, just so that you're limiting your droop. And basically, it's going to help eliminate a lot of the roll that is probably causing the bind as well. If your suspension can't move and pivot, you're not going to have as much roll. So here we can see there's major elevation change on the upper arm. And since the arm is so short, it makes the angle very extreme which I would think would be um, a major issue as far as the <coughs> binding. So for this one, I'm not sure if I can move the pickup point up around here somewhere. Uh, I, I need to check on the inside of the car. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do for this next event, because basically these drop brackets should hopefully get me through one event before I can go completely overhaul and do a three link setup. So stay tuned. All right, we're gonna go ahead and measure both these pickup points find the difference and that will be the amount of drop I need on these drop brackets the design I'm going to put multiple holes just for additional tuning if we need to in either direction depending on how the uh, anti-squat is and whatnot so So about 11 and 5 eighths. And we're about at 13 and a half. So the difference there is about two inches. So what I'm gonna do is put the first probably one hole at two inches down, one hole at one inches down, and another hole at three inches. 
And then we're gonna also move the shot down the corresponding amount as well. I will go that into that more detail on my next video, kind of showing how the design part is done. But this was just the da data gathering part as well, part of the project.